So, since last week, I did a little bit of sewing and worked on a doll or two. The first sewing I did was that doll I showed you last week with the Simpson Sandy head. One of the heads that Kate's Creations sent. And I put that head on a Blythe body because that was the only body I had that was the right skin tone. And I thought, oh, oh this will be a joke. But I kind of like the way it looked, especially as she had a really long neck. So I said, I'll make a turtleneck for her. And I did. And I made these pants. These pants are from that doll person's D stash from what, about two months ago when I had the doll meet up here. It was really a piece of cloth that was really just big enough to make these pants. And this sweater is made from... Years ago, I thrifted a wool sweater for me, and it was on like 99 cent day. When I got it home, I discovered it had a lot of moth holes in it. So that meant it was fine to use for doll clothes. And I think I'd used it already for a sweater because a lot of the knit bound edges were already missing when I pulled this out to make it, but I still I managed to pull out enough to make you know, her so this cut on in the sleeves, I didn't have to attach bands to the sleeves, and there was a enough around the neckline that I could cut out to attach the band to the bottom of the sweater. And of course, I just used the regular cloth to make the troll neck, and there's a big messy hook and loop tape closing in the back, but you'll never see it. <laughs> I say as I show it to you. So I like the way this turned out, and I do like this doll, and I do like her big fluffy hair, but I am also very tempted to reroute her in some fantasy color in a nicer hair fiber, but probably not anytime soon. You can see she has good old clone rooting, which, of course, the other option is to just flock this so she has an enormous undercut, which I might do, again, though, with fantasy tone hair. Because my one Blythe, who's back in there and I'm not going to get her out because I would knock things down or take forever. She has pink hair, so, you know, I like fantasy hair. You don't say. So I had this out, and when I say there was enough of the edges left to make this, that was... There was actually more than enough to make this, but I started looking at it and I realized that there would be enough to make another 60 centimeter doll. <clears throat> excuse me, sweater. So I got that cut out, and then there was enough left to make this. So I made this sweater. Technically, I need to go over with the iron because this, I guess it was stored folded up like this, so that fold wants to show. And I had to cut very strategically, especially in the back, because there was a moth hole I could not avoid. But the rest of it worked out pretty well. And the shorts are also from the doll person D stash. And it's really weird cloth. I've I've had this idea that they could do cloth like this before, but I'm not sure I've ever seen it before. You see that kind of vague printed plaid behind the butterflies? That's actually, I don't know if I can pull this, pull this up enough to show you. The other side of the cloth is completely printed in that plaid. So it shows through and then you put the butterflies on top and it's very ethereal. And again, there was just enough to make these shorts. My initial inclination was, and actually with this too, is always to make a skirt. Always make a skirt. But I guess I was in a... <laughs> my first thing is to say crotchy mood. Make things with pants and shorts, things that have crotches, not just full flowing skirts. And this cloth used for her tights was also from the doll person D stash. I was testing out making a proper pattern for tights in this size. Because like I said, I usually tend to just lay the doll on the cloth and kind of trace around it and make it work out, but the other thing I don't like about making tights for dolls is that the proper cloth like this is so thin and it's, to me, annoying to cut. I'm sure other people have no problem. So the way I saw that this time is I actually laid out two so two different cloths, so four, it was ended up being four layers of cloth, and I also sewed these at the same time. And then this is also a doll person tea stash. And like I said, I have put the idea of making a pattern like this for Barbie size, nice prop, for Barbie size in my eventual patterns to make to share envelope. And 
some like it, but I mean, I still have not tested that last pattern, the last change I made in the last pattern of the shirt. So hopefully once I get done with that, my brain will be freed and I can roll on to the other stuff. And that would be a quick video, except I have a rambling story to go through before I show you my next doll. I know I'm good with rambling. So when I know it's going to ramble, yeah. <laughs> So in early October, somebody posted a link to an auction on the Shop Goodwill auction site. It was 150 pounds of Barbies. I mean, it said Barbies. We know that that many Barbies is probably five, six hundred dolls. There's going to be a lot of non-Mattel dolls in there. But anyway, it was 150 pounds of Barbies for $300 opening bid. Free shipping. And a lot of us passed it around and said, oh, that's funny, but Pandora, Pandora, full. Kate Larson thought, hey, I want that. And looked at PayPal and said, hey, I need to sell stuff. So put a bunch of BJD stuff up with the idea that people would pay fast and then Kate would get all the money and then could pay for the eBay auction like within the amount of, you know, I think seven days to pay and then juggle all the dolls and everything. But at the last minute, as always, she was outbid. So she still had this stuff for sale. Now, the, I had happened to have not had enough in my PayPal to pay for the doll bits that she had posted that I liked. So I contacted her afterwards and say, hey, if it's gonna take me a while to get the funds into my PayPal with enough of a cushion so that I don't feel like I'm using all my money, will you still have these for sale? Or are you still gonna sell the stuff? And it was a thumbs up, yes, and it's getting very dark outside, so I'm sorry if it's affecting the quality of the video. It was sunny when I started. So that's when I put the doll clothes up for sale to get the money. But the thing about my PayPal is that's what I pay for gas and some groceries out of. So the money doesn't stay in my PayPal. It goes out. So I wasn't accumulating money as fast as I wanted, especially since I wanted to get to a certain point. So I'd have plenty of money left after I bought the doll parts. And I mentioned that I was thinking about putting my Hujo Ayo up for sale again. Because although I loved her face up, she's had this little tiny head on this big huge body and it's just... And the body was... I thought it was weird to pose and it just didn't appeal to me. So another Kate, Kate Nikolai, came in and said, If you're serious about selling that body, I will buy it. Not You can keep the head. I just bought the body. So we worked out that and I threw in, like this body had weird big feet, so I threw in all the shoes and the clothes I made for her big bust. As soon as that transaction cleared, as soon as she got the doll and it worked for what she wanted to use it for, I contacted Kate Pandorfel and said, I can pay you for the stuff now. And it's like, yay, so I paid. And she shipped, but that was Thanksgiving week, so Thanksgiving, you know. I, I have a very good history of ordering stuff before no mail holidays and not realizing that I've done it until after I've ordered it. So the head was an Impel Doll Vanessa head in tan and the body was a Bow Bobby Ophelia in pale skin tone that somebody had, if you know anything about the Bow Bobby, Bo Bobby bodies and their boobies, they have weird boobs. So somebody in this history of this doll's ownership had sanded them down. So they were much more, um, natural looking. So it had this pale body in the tan head, so I started researching how to dye dolls. So I could, because I didn't think, I thought if I painted the whole body, it would start chipping and scraping. And I know there's a history of people dyeing resin dolls. And so I'm learning about dyeing the stuff and I was like, all ready to get the doll and throw in the dye pot. But of course, a little bit of research said that my dye that I had was old writ made for cottons, and I really needed the new writ dye more for synthetics. So I looked on the Walmart website because I knew it would be in Walmart Sunday morning. This would be Black Friday weekend, and I did not want to leave the house, especially for shopping areas, if I did not have to. So the Walmart website made it seem like they didn't stock it in the store. So I thought, okay, on Monday, I will venture out to Joanne. And then we did our shopping on Sunday morning in Walmart and I looked and they had it in the color I wanted. So I spent several hours Sunday afternoon 
the big pot of not quite boiling water on the stove, dying doll parts. And after I got the the um, Bo Bobby and stuff dyed to the color I wanted, I went ahead and started chucking some other dolls and things into that dye bath just because I had it. But So Sunday I dyed the doll. Monday I took her down to the basement where the airbrush is and I evened out the color and blushed and sealed. Yesterday I painted the fingernails and lips and eye makeup but I was like really 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 hesitant to paint the brows because I have always been really bad at painting doll brows. So I did research and if you know me I'm not prone to doing research I'm just prone to saying hey what had happened if I did this thing. So I did research and I discovered that the thing that people actually do which since I'd never actually researched this before I didn't know is they brush on the eyebrow shape with pastels and then they use an eraser, a soft eraser, a kneaded eraser or a vinyl eraser cut to a point to refine the shape of the brows and take the pastel back off of the bodies. Like, oh, this is good to know because like I said, I'd always been just terribly hesitant to do brows on painted dolls because paint on paint, you can't just take the acetone and wipe it off. So. I didn't want to do that last night because it was late, so I strung the doll. Although I did need to get husband's help at the very last minute to get the last little bit pulled taut and hooked up together. So I strung the body together, and this morning I finally did the eyebrows. They're not great. And I got her put together, and here she is. Yes, when I said, and this was when I was talking on Tumblr, I was doing it this way too. I was like trying to imply that I was going to dye the body to match the head. No, it's a green doll. So I'm not sure how durable her overall body color will be because she is dyed green. It's a nice color green, but there was a lot of sanding on this body, not only in the seams, but also the, um, the bust reduction. And I knew from all the research I'd done that sanded parts, sanded parts on resin will dye unevenly. They will take the, just take the dye unevenly. So I went over her with a coat of, I think it's Christmas green, just airbrushed from Walmart. And that evened everything out. I mean, I did not lay the, the color on solidly like, solidly like when I'm painting a normal doll body. So I just used that to even out her skin tone more or less. And then I blushed her with I don't even remember what it's called. It's one of um, one of husband's <laughs> war miniature paint, camo paint colors to blush her. And then I sealed her with Purity Seal, which I didn't think about the fact. I thought, you know, I have my nice respirator mask. I won't smell it, but I didn't even think about the fact that the whole house smelled like Purity Seal for a few hours. So I will not be using Purity Seal inside again. So I just got her together and dressed right before the video. That's why she's not wearing anything elaborate, but she's done. I don't know. I don't know how much of her is showing in the video. And this is the Bo Bobby Ophelia body, and I knew I'd read about how the the center torso piece really needs to be suede to hold in place. And the body actually had been hot glue suede when I got it, so I would need to like lever her apart and do that again, I guess. But for now. I'm pretty happy with her. And when I had been plotting and planning her, I was trying to think of names. And just a ridiculous thing, I didn't do it initially, but I realized that my first few BDADs in the last few years all had L's in their names. So I thought, well, she's green, I will call her Clover. But then she started shaping up and I thought, eh, she's really not a Clover. So I looked to Wikipedia for like the Latin name for clover and other names for kinds of clover and caught my eye there's a kind of clover called alcyke which is green with the clover flowers on the top are white with a pink blush so I thought oh that'll work and I of course the word name alcyke is maybe somebody's taste in doll names but not mine so I looked into Owl Psych Clover and found it's actually named after a Swedish town. 
So I kind of corralled my Swedish friend online and say, Hey, how would you tell a clueless American how to actually pronounce this name? So that's Osika, 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 which I know is not close, but that's her name. This, this is me, Osika. So that was my big project, but I told you I did chuck some other things into the green dye. And that would be these two. Now their vinyl parts, their heads and her arms and her arms and legs just slurped up. Oh, and obviously her hair. I mean, there's still a little bit. I didn't take her hair out of the original style or even take out the original the ribbon so you can see a little bit of the original blonde. You see the dye worked beautifully on her hair and their soft skins. It dyed their hard plastics a little bit I mean, it was noticeably green and not pink anymore, but I went ahead and went through and airbrushed them. This is, she's got scrapes around her hip where I was um, trying to jam her legs back in because I took her legs and arms and head off to just airbrush the torso. Her, I masked off the stuff, but then she fell. <laughs> so she has a few scrapes. Once she's dressed, they won't show. So I need to fix up her hair, get her lashes put back in because they came out when she was boiled get her hair fixed up or maybe replaced, haven't decided yet. This is one of the dolls that Kate's Creation sent, thanks again, and this is a doll from the Doll Person's D-Stash that she had bought, I think it was an Alice in Wonderland doll that she, Ma Madame Alexander, that she had bought just to steal the clothes. And so I grabbed it and I kind of knew I wanted it to be green, but I didn't know what I would do about airbrushing around the eyes because they're sleep eyes and sleep eyes don't seal properly, but I think she worked out pretty well. So we'll see. I, I don't know how long I've been rambling. I feel like I haven't been rambling as much as I have, so this might still be a reasonable video. And I will get proper pictures of Elsica, and I might actually post them on Flickr even though I am not going to be using Flickr a whole bunch. I, as I said to Julia today, I am not deleting my Flickr. I'm not closing my Flickr account. I'm just not going to be posting stuff to it much anymore, but I will be still on Flickr so I can still follow people and comment on people's stuff. Okay, cutting out the rambling. Thanks for watching. Have a good week.